Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Dario Tarabarelli. I'm the Wikimedia Foundation uh, Director of Research. And I'm here today with Daniel Michin and uh, Lydia Pincher to talk about an initiative that uh, uh, we, we've been involved in. Um, we all deeply care about citations and verifiability. We've been busy for the past uh, three years almost. Um, building an initiative uh, to make citations suck less in Wikimedia projects. That's pretty much what it's about. So the primary reason why open knowledge works is that it's verifiable, right? Every single statement that we can find in a Wikipedia article, in a Wikidata statement, uh, um, fulfills its function because it's backed by a number of uh, vetted, reliable sources that our communities have been able to contribute to these contents. And Wikipedia wouldn't be what it is today with its extensive coverage of citations and references. And that doesn't only apply to um, encyclopedic topics, it also applies to current news. For example, we have extensive coverage of news articles to make everything we read on current events uh, verifiable, as verifiable as possible. And the same, of course, applies to topics of scientific relevance. We have uh, entire communities of volunteers and researchers who are basically carefully annotating um, Wikipedia articles on any topic that you can think of um, with the, uh, the best possible literature um, and review articles, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, for Wikipedia and Wikidata to fulfill their missions, uh, every single entity you can think of, every single topic you can think of, needs to find the best possible sources to back this information. So there's a debate mounting on how to fight misinformation. As of today, there are apparently 5 million hits for solutions to fight fake news. Um, um, Wikimedia have, have cracked the solution to this problem 15 years ago. So a combination of uh, policies around uh, sourcing and processes to vet this information today represent the best solution that we have to uh, come up with uh, information that people can trust. And so building tools and repository of sources, you'd imagine is something that as a movement, we had sorted out 15 years ago. The story is slightly more complicated, right? And I'm going to give you like a quick history of uh, efforts uh, that um, we've been putting together over the course of the years. So as of 2017, this is mostly the state of how we do references and citations in, in Wikipedia. So uh, what's possibly the most important ingredient of open knowledge um, is still served by this uh, efficient but fairly rudimentary uh, mechanism of a template with semi-structured uh, metadata about each source. And if you think about it for a second, every single ingredient of a Wikipedia article, be it media files, categories, um, links, has been supported over the years by dedicated technology. We basically built infrastructure and tools around any other type of uh, of element of, any, of a Wikipedia article. Um, when it comes to citations, with the exception potentially of Cytoid, there's some, some exciting new developments, there hasn't been much technology uh, breakthrough over the course of the years. And um, the idea of building some kind of centralized solution to support the sourcing efforts of the community actually goes back to uh, 2005, um, at the earliest, in a, in a structured format. Um, there's a long history of attempts to build a, a central repository of sources to serve uh, Wikimedia projects at large. But um, the reason why these efforts uh, didn't really take off is probably because uh, up until recently, the social and technical infrastructure that we needed to, uh, to, to, to build these efforts were not quite there yet. Um, now, fast forward to 2017, we have an answer to these problems, we believe, thanks to Wikidata. So Wikidata today has uh, the vision, technology, the community, the scale, the licensing model, and the independence to uh, build this notion of a central repository of sources to serve uh, uh, all human knowledge. 
So it doesn't, Wikidata doesn't only provide a, an infrastructure to build this repository of human knowledge, it provides an infrastructure of structured knowledge that both humans and machines alike can contribute to. And if you think of uh, citations and source metadata, they are by definition structured data. So every time we, every time we represent a source, we think about uh, its bibliographic record, um, its author, title, identifier. So all of this data is by its very nature structured data. So there's a natural fit between what we're trying to do here and Wikidata as an infrastructure. So in 2016, we started Wikisite. And Wikisite is an initiative that is trying basically to make this thing happen. Uh, the idea is to build a, a universal repository of sources to serve human knowledge, leveraging Wikidata as its infrastructure. And the vision of Wikisite is pretty much the same as the original 2005 idea. So um, if we build this infrastructure, we'll be able to design better workflows and better processes to allow us to discuss and analyze and curate and vet and reuse, ultimately, uh, all these sources across Wikimedia projects. And what's really powerful about Wikidata is that it, it allows us to represent uh, the uh, granular relationship between uh, a statement, a piece of knowledge, and a source. And by doing that, it also allows us to connect uh, each source to all the information existing in Wikidata about that source and its authors and the outlets where it's been published, um, and the statement itself to all the corresponding entities. So this allows us to build this network of how sources and knowledge uh, relate to each other, which I think is really the, uh, the, the powerful value proposition of, of Wikisite in this context. So think about it for a second. Being able to represent the connection between a source and a knowledge statement will allow us to answer questions such as, uh, what are all the statements that are citing a New York Times article? Uh, or what are all the statements that are citing a journal article that was retracted? Uh, doing this at scale is something that uh, Wikidata allows. It has, has not been possible in the past. And similarly, if we think of applying the same approach to, uh, to Wikipedia, we can start thinking about how to improve the quality and the uh, process around source information in, in Wikipedia. Uh, and also study the ways in which uh, Wikipedians contribute um, sources to, um, to Wikipedia articles. I, I really like this quote by Egan. Hey, Egan, I don't know where you are. <laughs> should be here. Um, he's been using this, um, uh, this notion for a while uh, that Wikidata is really the provenance engine of information. And he tweeted at some point uh, uh, two years ago uh, that in five years' time, the verb to Wikidata will mean to look up a fact with literature provenance. I think it's a very powerful way of capturing what we're trying to, to talk about here. Um, think about the idea of having a specific statement in Wikidata. For example, the fact that Zika virus has uh, as its natural reservoir um, uh, a specific, uh, a specific um, species. In this case, um, it is Hensili. So that specific um, piece of knowledge can now be traced back to its provenance. It can be traced back to the article where it was uh, published. It can be traced back to whoever funded that piece of research. It can be traced back to the authors, the outlet, the publisher. So in a nutshell, uh, Wikidata allows you to represent the entire genealogy of the very specific piece of statement by connecting, again, uh, a statement to its sources. And a few people have also suggested that once we have this extensive coverage of sources and how they relate to statements, we can start thinking about this notion of a computable trust. We can start doing analysis on a, a whether there are biases or quality gaps in citations, and get to a point where we can provide uh, uh, humans and, and curators of, of knowledge better ways of understanding whether the sources they're using are accurate or not, or they should be maybe looking for different types of, uh, of sources. So in 2016, we brought together a pretty small group of uh, uh, 
enthusiasts, um, including librarians, Wikimedians, uh, Wikidata contributors, researchers, software developers, try and figure out what this thing could look like. There's a very preliminary effort to figure out even the scope of this initiative. And this year, we hosted a much larger three-day event. We had nearly 100 attendees uh, from 22 countries. We hosted uh, 16 formal presentations. We had 17 work groups at our summit, uh, 38 lightning talks, 20 hackathon demos, you know, where the, uh, the community started to take off around this effort. And it's really exciting to see how much has been produced by this group. So there's been a lot that happened. Uh, and I want to pass it on to Daniel to give you an overview of the many highlights of what has been happening in the movement over the course of a year. Okay, thanks, Dario. Um, yeah, so um, one way to look at it is just by the numbers and uh, plotting them over time. Um, some version of this was already in Lydia's talk. So um, about one quarter of Wikidata is now publications. Um, of those, uh, there's lots of different kinds of publications, but the majority is uh, scientific articles. And uh, what does the Wikisite community do? Well, uh, lots of things, but a very first step for most of those things is actually try to think in terms of data models. So for a book like The Origin of Species by Darwin, we think about how we could actually model that in Wikidata terms. So um, it has an author, it has a, a publisher, it has a number of pages, it's part of a genre and, and all these kind of things. And um, then we we first, like everybody here, uh, experiment on a small scale. And for books, this is still happening. We don't really have a fixed data model. Um, but once we have done our own uh, experiments with that, we talk to others. Uh, there is uh, Wiki Project Books on Wikidata, for instance, where the, uh, the different um, aspects of the data model are being discussed. And uh, then, uh, we always keep in mind the other Wikimedia projects. So he, what you see here is actually screenshots from Wikisource, <laughs> uh, where Darwin's text is there. And he cites Goethe and over there and Humboldt. And I had to bring this up because they both appeared in our keynote, opening keynote. Um, yeah, and uh, together with um, Friedrich Schiller and Wilhelm Humboldt. So yeah, uh, Darwin cited Alexander von Humboldt, which is this one. And uh, I have to mention this because it's in Jena where I live. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but the point here is uh, for an image, we can say it depicts something. And so it depicts, for instance, those four people. Um, and uh, they can all be also be related to literature because they're all authors of things many of which we have in Wikidata, and Darwin cites them. We, we call the, the initiative Wikisite because citing is one of those things you can do with bibliographic items and that the bibliographic items do amongst themselves and so we can represent that within the Wikiverse. We don't have an equivalent for texts that we could use to say something like the text is mentioning this. So uh, the, the way Darwin is mentioning Goethe and Humboldt. There are also things like he, of course, refers to them in his English text, in his English translation, but is not very specific as to which translation of which German version that actually was. Um, so, some basic stats. We have a very detailed um, template here um, that has many dozens of properties that fall within the scope of Wikisite. Um, just uh, for to get an overview, um, we have... 800,000 statements of author, P50. We have 40 million statements of the author name string. That is confusing for people who are not used to work with this, but if you are just looking at a book, what you see there is an author string. Um, if you go to a typical database with uh, references, what you get there is an author name string. If you're lucky, they might also have an identifier and uh, for Wikidata, the identifier would be the Wikidata ID. Uh, in other contexts, it might be an ORCID and YF, all these other kinds of things. Um, but since we get them from other places, usually as just the string, we then need to disambiguate them. Smith J, John Smith, Smith, comma J, 
uh, into that particular John Smith or Josephine Smith or so. And so the conversion from those 40 million to the, uh, of 2093 to the P50s is going on. And um, yeah, this will probably take a while. And uh, we will almost certainly never be complete. On the other hand, Wikidata might actually be the mechanism that brings us closest to completeness in terms of author disambiguation because um, it encompasses uh, in, in scope many of the other uh, databases of, of literature, uh, so uh, which are more focused on specific topics. Um, and so integration with other um, initiatives also centered around author disambiguation is very important. Um, we also are, well, as we heard a number of times, Wikidata is an identifier hub. So in the space of citations, bibliographic metadata, we have identifiers for books like ISBN, which actually comes in two flavors um, here, 29,000. And we have identifiers for scholarly articles, for instance, uh, like the DOI, Digital Object Identifier, of which we have s almost 7 million. And then we try, as Dario showed in the example for the Zika, we try to link those things all together. So, for instance, uh, we try to annotate the articles as to what subject they are about. So, articles about the Zika virus are tagged as being about the Zika virus, which then constitutes the Zika corpus, with which we can then do certain things. It's now becoming a, a guinea pig. It's interesting that a virus can become a guinea pig, but, uh, but on Wikidata it can. Um, yeah, so... Um, how does that relate to the other Wikimedia projects? So one thing we've done is we've gone systematically through uh, the Wikipedias, starting with the English, but then also reaching out to the other Wikipedias, looking at which things are being cited on the Wikipedias that have a persistent identifier. So those strings that don't make sense to any human at the end of a citation, um, they're very useful for um, automated processing. So. Uh, we looked at which of these are actually cited from uh, Wikipedia and then for those articles we imported them or we tried to set up a Wikidata item. There, for most cases this actually worked but there are some problems still to be worked out and that's, some of, uh, that's within the scope of those initiatives that for instance we were doing at the hackathon and so on. All these demos they had focuses like this. Um, yeah. This is from a slide earlier this week. There was another conference in Berlin where, um, and let's call it an initiative that is doing something similar. Scopus, one of the largest scholarly databases, uh, they also provide citation information. They have information about the journals in which this uh, scientific articles are being published. Okay, well, it's the web of science. <laughs> it's uh, which is a competitive scope. Well, there are other initiatives. It's not just Wikidata doing this. And uh, so uh, for scale, they, they're now indexing 32,000 journals. Um, Wikidata has 42,000. Um, they ha are focused on English. So is Wikidata, but is less focused on English. Um, yeah. Um, there is a property that can express that Darwin cites Goethe, or basically the, the specific work of by Darwin is citing that specific work by Goethe. Um, and this property has been used 36 million times, from which we can then build a citation graph, of which you have a very small example here. And by bringing all these things together, uh, this is again the, the Zika corpus. We actually have a wiki project, Zika corpus, that's linked from here. Yeah, the slides have been shared and tweeted, yeah, just by the way. Um, and then simply by looking at the topics, well, if any, any individual article item is annotated as to which topics uh, it is about, and if it's more than one, then you can look at whether any of those come in pairs more often across a number of articles, which is called co-occurring topics matrix. And then from that, you can actually uh, discover relationships. Maybe you're interested in reproductive medicine. And then, uh, of course, yeah, the mosquito. What about breast milk? What's the, what's the uh, effect of the virus on breastfeeding? Things like that. So this is the kind of um, network of topics that are related to that Zika virus. 
Um, you can also slice the information in different ways, and that is uh, now, yeah, the, the last two uh, things were uh, screenshots from a tool that is um, being presented in more detail in the next session, Scolia. Um, here you can slice the information by what are the co-authorships. Uh, th just the same way we did it with the topics, you can look at which people are actually publishing together for w more than one article. Or uh, you can look at awards that people are getting, then you can look at where those people are actually, uh, well, are the institutions located that the people are affiliated with that get a particular award. Or, and that comes back more or less to like the, the very reason for uh, Wikidata to exist or Wikisite to exist, that's the referencing. Like, which uh, statements in Wikidata are actually supported by a given reference? So here you can plot it. And uh, in, in academic circles, uh, the impact of a particular publication is usually measured by <laughs> means that don't make any sense if you look at them t uh, scientifically. But here you see this paper has uh, lent support to eight statements in Wikidata. That is a very useful indicator, actually, of impact. Um, if, of course, the inverse doesn't doesn't work. Like if a paper has given uh, no support to any uh, statement in Wikidata, it may well mean well Wikidata is just incomplete, which it still is. Or if there is uh, a paper that uh, has thousands of statements um, support that it supports on Wikidata. Well, then it might actually mean it's really impactful, right? But it doesn't mean that it's the only uh, paper that could support the statements, just the one that was used by this particular editor. Um, another tool that uh, we haven't spoken about too much is actually annotations. So here is an example. If you uh, click on that, you would come to a pa paper um, that is annotated by way of hypothesis. And uh, so someone has annotated human text and then put in the link. The annotation has a persistent URL. Um, put in the link as a source for a statement. And the statement here is that in schizophrenia, the expression of realine, so we're on the item of realine here, is reduced. If you don't fully understand that, uh, that doesn't matter too much. The important point is we can actually basically harvest the reading process. If you're reading literature, you're probably making annotations. If you read them digitally, you should make those annotations digitally. And if you make them digitally, you can make them open. Then you can give them in a URL. We can use them as a reference to statements in Wikidata. And not just you, all the others that are watching life as well, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and in order to support all this, we are reaching out to a number of other communities. So um, uh, let's focus on one initiative here, which is um, the in Initiative for Open Citations, which builds on uh, work that many others have been doing in this space, but has been catalyzed in part by Wikidata and Wikisite. The idea here is that there's a lot of information contained in the network of citations between different, let's say, scholarly articles um, and other publications. And um, so far, information about these links between the different publications wasn't available under an open license. And so there is now an in initiative that focuses on making those uh, relationships available under an open license and also in machine readable form. It was already machine readable, just not openly licensed. And uh, yeah, we are talking about this to different stakeholder groups um, quite successfully, although we're still far from completion, especially some of the big players are not yet part of that initi initiative. And yeah, we're also working on technical collaboration. So for instance, if you have uh, part of what you read, apart from annotating it, you probably keep the metadata somewhere in some sort of uh, reference manager. If you're using Zotero, you can basically translate your library into Wikidata terms. Um, and yeah, we are uh, collaborating with a number of other initiatives. Content Mind, there will be an additional talk in this room later on. Um, yeah, I can't go into all of them, but they're all valuable and uh, we, we do different things with them. That's part of those 
what was it, 40 or so different demos we had at Wikisite. And not everyone could be at Wikisite. Yeah, it's, this work wouldn't work without the sponsor, so we also <laughs> have to uh, write proposals and reports about the events that we do, reach out to sponsors. Um, in the meantime, we have a lot of fun. <laughs> and Yeah, and there, but there are challenges. So, and I leave the challenges to Lydia. <laughs> I get to be the one to talk about the challenges. Awesome. Um, <laughs> all right. So what Dario and Daniel talked about is pretty amazing and important work. Um, I think Dario made that very clear, how, how fundamental citations and everything around it is to the work we do. Um, still, there are some challenges that I want to talk about. Um, one of them is how how do we represent um, all the different publication types that are out there and how do we model them? Um, just to give you some idea, <laughs> we're only scratching the surface on properly modeling all of those. Um, but we probably want to, um, because all those are important for citing knowledge. Then the next one we have, um, I talked this morning a bit about um, a steep increase in the number of items we have um, coming from Wikisite. And in order to be able to deal with that, we also need tools and processes to do that. And um, one of the challenges we have is figuring out how those should look, what kind of tools do we need, what kind of additional um, changes to existing tools do we need, how do we need to adapt our processes to make that work. Um, here's just um, one of those tools that uh, exists called SourceMD that's um, being used to, to add um, data to, to Wikidata, if I understand it correctly. All right, number three. Um, we, we need citation data, but um, really understanding what kind of data we need and um, what kind of data we already have is, is a challenge. Um, we need to better understand what, what, kind of wiki, uh, what kind of citation data Wikipedia, for example, needs. And, um, how how we can serve that and and where we go beyond that there's for example this um here in um english wikipedia there's 3 million um citations with an isbn and uh 90,000 90, in uh, the dutch wikipedia and in wikidata right now we are at uh 30,000 items that have an isbn so there's clearly a gap and an analysis like that is, is what we need to do much more and much more um, in depth. And number four is something that um, popped up recently is better understanding and, and better working together with the other Wikimedia projects in how they are going to use that data, right? Because it's all great if we have that data in Wikidata and make it available, but if Wikipedia doesn't use it, then we have a problem. <laughs> um, because then we're losing out on a lot of the benefit that the work we do ha should have. Um, just a recent um, discussion, for example, on English Wikipedia um, was about the, um, the template that, that is making citations from Wikidata items available in English Wikipedia. All right. And I think with that, we open the floor for discussion. Yeah, so basically we have a, a few final pointers about how to get involved and what we're going to do next. But basically, we wanted to hear your thoughts. I think this is the first time that we present this at an event with a larger uh, part of the Wikidata population, contributor population. And so we want to hear from you if this makes any sense at all, if there's something like some burning question you have, and we'll continue the conversation after this talk, of course. And I will hand around the microphone.
Is is there a notion of statement that's larger and more complicated than a Wikidata statement? Like, for, for the fact-checking use case at the start, um, the moon is made of blue, blue cheese. You could break it out into a triple and put it in as a fact into Wikidata, but that's not really the core of the problem. Trying to repeat the Trying to repeat the question, uh, is the current granularity of Wikidata statement uh, sufficient for representing something, for example, fact checkers will need uh, to do their job? Uh, that's a great question. Like, personally, I feel like uh, we should get to a point where the combination of properties and qualifiers will allow us to represent anything, uh, but we're not there yet. So probably the answer is it depends. It depends on the domain. There are some areas because of people who've been doing bio-curation, you can do fact-checking on proteins and genes in a very granular way. Uh, for topics in current news, maybe not. So maybe we need more properties and more qualifiers. I, I guess I wasn't always sure when you said statement, if you meant statement in the colloquial sense or in the pure Wikidata triple sense. I, I, I meant in a, in a formal sense uh, with Wikidata, but... Maybe that's me seeing the scope of statements in Wikidata as covering eventually 100% of all human knowledge, but we'll get there at some point. Um, I don't want to hold the microphone, but I could talk about this all day. <laughs> all right. Um, I have a question on the publication time because that's something uh, is very interesting because I try to, like for example, many of the recent research papers, they use different articles. Oh, sorry, different softwares. And these softwares are based on some other algorithms. So how to, like, this, this is different types, categories of uh, publications or that they cite, they cite in their work. And second question is related to what uh, Daniel Mission was saying, was about annotations. And annotations are subjective for me. And if I put something like, uh, this is... This is my point of view that this is correct, and I put a reference URL. For me, annotations are a bit more subjective. Uh, I don't know. That's. Um, let me start with the annotations. Um, yes, they are subjective, but so are most uh, sources that they are being made on. And uh, the point here is making like the um, the route more transparent from where the information came from. So actually, if we just say it came from that article, uh, then you're lost in trying to find the, that, the source of that statement in those 10 or whatever, how many pages that are. If you have an annotation, you, uh, it's much more easy to locate that information to actually verify whether that can be translated into that Wikidata statement. So that's a short response, I, I guess, on the annotations. It may be good for us, uh, I think, uh, for computers or scientific article. It may be good for scientific articles, but think about uh, political articles or <laughs> I think it can go. This is actually being done. So Hypothesis has, uh, which is one of the annotation tools and the one that was used in the example, they have uh, some com sub community that is annotating systematically news articles about climate change which has led to a number of those news articles being retracted because the annotations clearly pointed out, and they, uh, you can comment on them, that some of those statements just were plain wrong. And that speaks to your subjectivity, but it also speaks to the possibility of using annotations to actually do fact-checking. Now, by, by now, I've actually forgotten your first question. Uh, <laughs> different types of publication. Yeah, how the different types of publications speak to each other. Yeah, well, technically, uh, we can all say they, uh, like, for instance, they cite each other. Uh, you, you saw that ma long, large matrix of things that are being cited, uh, including poems and things like that. Yes, they do cite each other, and we don't, don't have good data models for most of them. So right now, the best data model that we have uh, applies to a subset of scientific articles. We have emerging data models for certain kinds of books, for conference proceedings and patents and court cases and things like that. But many of the other things we haven't even touched yet. Just trying to figure out that these things exist. And they, they come from different people who may not have heard of Wikisite. They just want to annotate their poems or psalms or whatever they are working with. and Or movies, yes, they cite each other. Um, yeah, and we just try to uh, take a holistic view on that so that we do not just go for 
physics or whatever. Uh, we really try to want uh, to uh, handle references in a more general way. And the more structured they are already, the easier it is. And that's why we start with those areas where we have some databases that are somewhat structured. And this is, by the way, what we're trying to engage with the librarian community. It's so important that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> we are decades of efforts around modeling sources. And so trying to see how we can map these efforts to what exists in Wikidata in terms of properties and data models. Okay, so this might be kind of a stupid question, but how does Wikisite sort of overlap with like the, the notion of a reference in like a Wikipedia? Like, it seems like Wikisite may have a particular bent towards scientific uh, journals, but that may just be in what's happening now. Yeah, that's a good question. I think it's important to clarify the scope of the project. So there's been a, a pretty significant growth, as all of you saw, in the era of scientific um, references. Uh, that's not what we thought would be the scope of, of Wikisite. So, and speaking for the organizers, then the community has a different uh, view of this. But um, the idea of Wikisite was to be agnostic about different types of sources. Um, scholarly papers um, had found a, a community, a group of people, like really excited about uh, experimenting with data models. But they're also a fairly simple case because modeling the bibliographic record for a scholarly paper is relatively easier than modeling a news source or, or a book. Um, turns out that we had entire groups of people at Wikisite trying to come up with a pragmatic way of representing books in, in Wikidata, and it's a very complicated uh, question. So papers are easy. Uh, they have consistent APIs, so it's easy to retrieve data and do some um, cleanup and, and deduplication. Books, news articles, poems, um, Patents, like all the other types of, uh, of works are much harder. But the, uh, the scope of Wikisite is not, and this is something I need to emphasize, is not uh, limited to scholarly papers. Um, cool, thank you. Questions here. Thank you. I'd just like to give a bit more background to um, some of the issues around the citations in Wikipedia and their relationship to Wikisite. Lydia um, put up the slide about CiteQ, which was the template I built to as a prototype for how we could call metadata from Wikidata for citations in Wikipedia. And Lydia also uh, this morning pointed out that the person data template has been removed from Wikipedia completely because the data is now in Wikidata. And Wikipedia calls all of its uh, authority control data about people from Wikidata. So it's the same model. But uh, while we were discussing the CiteQ template recently, I did a little bit of research looking at the most cited work in Wikipedia, in the English Wikipedia. And I'm afraid I can't remember the title, but it's a, basically a catalogue of astronomical bodies. And I took a random sample of, or a semi-random sample, of some of the instances of it being cited, averaged the number of characters and multiplied it by the number of citations, and that one work alone takes up about a third of a gigabyte of text in, by, by being cited repeatedly in multiple Wikipedia, you know, hundreds of Wikipedia articles. If any of us were given the job by our employer of writing a database and said, well, you just put this piece of text into the database 3,000 times, we'd get the sack because it's a stupid way to design a database. In Wikipedia, it's grown organically over the years, and Wikisite is the mechanism by which we can improve the structure of that data uh, and prevent needless duplication. Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a fair point. There are questions that are technical that Wikisite can, can solve. Um, on top of like storage, the reuse of uh, source metadata across articles. Right now, it's impossible, you said, if you have a, a given source cited in article A, to reuse it in another article of the same language, not even a different language, right? So we could optimize enormously uh, the processes. However, I think that there's a message that I think Lydia was emphasizing. There are technical problems. The social ones, as we know, having been there, are as complex uh, and probably more complex than technical ones. And more fun to solve, yeah. yes. There's a question here. So like I'm in New York City now, and um, like we had an editathon or an event recently where people were translating articles using uh, content translation, and like 
what they told me one of the biggest problems is like they can copy things over and translate but the references don't easily copy over because they're using like different templates and then like all that so so it's like i think i mean potentially in the future like with the the with Wikidata having the references and maybe a more standardized template or, or thing that that like that will be easier in the future. But right now like like that was one of the biggest problems they have. So so then uh, like maybe the references get lost or something like which is not like great. Good point. Oh yeah. Um Early on, you showed a slide where you had finance to buy. OK, very exciting. Um, I was wondering, do you have a ready set made of um, ready made set of um, queries, graphs, things like that that one could show to people so that they'd see right away the utility of it? I'm especially thinking of investigative journalists. Right. Um, we do have queries. I think the main blocker is coverage, right? So we don't have yet uh, like extensive coverage of funder information uh, in Wikidata. I might be wrong. And Daniel is now running a live I'm query. Yeah. So I so I'm very excited too about funder information, like reconstructing who's paying for a specific bit of information and whether we should trust that funder or if we want to know what that funder uh, is specializing is something that right now is really hard to, uh, to even visualize and, 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 and study. So um, there are some cases where this is fairly easy. For example, or in principle at least, um, scientific papers should have a, a funder ID that if I am a grantee and I, I, I publish an article, I need to acknowledge a funder and in principle, this funder information should be part of metadata deposited to, um, with a bibliographic record. When that happens, in principle, we should be able to ingest this information or present it. For other cases, such as you know, news articles uh, and who funds specific types of, uh, um, of work, it's harder. We don't have consistent APIs. We don't have uh, identifiers for, for sources. So it's challenging. but. Uh, I'm excited as you are about the idea of reconstructing this provenance uh, of, of knowledge. Um, let me just add the things I was trying to show. Uh, first, in the exam on the Wikidata query service, we have a number of examples. Some of those examples are actually about Wikisite stuff. So, for instance, you can get a list of papers published by people who got the Nobel Prize or something like this. Uh, and uh, about the funding in Scolia, there is a feature that actually exposes the information um, if it is in Wikidata, which it typically is not, but in some cases it is. The information as to who has financed um, the research report in a given article as indicated in the publication. Some publications actually make the grant numbers available. And so if the information is there and harvestable, it can end up in Wikidata. Sometimes it does, but it's not systematic yet. So uh, well, one thing, <coughs> I don't think Wikidata itself is very consistent in the way we use references because, of course, every statement can have a reference. Um, sometimes we use stated in, sometimes it's reference URLs, and sometimes it's the entire reference information with the title and the author. And <laughs> uh, How can we get uh, Wikidata editors to, uh, <laughs> to be Wikisite aware and, and try, to, <laughs> try to follow this practice by, by adding their citations as actual entities? I think that's, that's a challenge for us. Yes. Definitely. Um, and I think um, with the new constraint reports on the one hand, um, where we have constraints that help make things more consistent, and on the other hand, um, support for Citoid. So people um, put in a URL, for example, and it automatically gets all the other important stuff um, as an example. And I think those two things will, will help quite a bit with that. So one more thing, and I think you're totally right. Uh, the Wikisite community, as far as I know, has put more effort into thinking about uh, modeling citations in Wikipedia and how they may possibly map to Wikidata. We don't have a good citation model for Wikidata itself, which is ironic. So I, I think you have a point there. Yes. 
I think there was a question there, and then Ben. Thank you. Um, I want to ask about access to the full text of the articles that have been ingested, whether there's any plans to try and link to open access copies where the paper is behind a paywall if you use a DOI? Yes, in capital letters. Um, so um, the focus of, well, one of the foci of the current import um, is actually on articles that have a PubMed central ID, which means a full text in biomedicine. Um, Not all full text. They, a lot of them link out to a publisher, but then it's behind a paywall. PubMed central as a full text archive. Um, then we also have a property that that is um, in English it's named something like full text available at and there is a bot going around on Wikipedia not yet on Wikidata um, but I guess some of them uh, the people are, are here um, so that could basically do that same thing on Wikidata and then that information would in principle be harvestable by other Wikipedias and so on and that what that bot does is basically it takes the identifiers from the citation on any Wikipedia, then looks up certain full text options on the web, including like the free floating web, and uh, and then um, provides the user with a link to uh, some copy of the article that that tool thinks is a copy of the article, and then we have some tools that can actually help human editors to verify that this is actually a copy of that article, and then you can insert that into Wikipedia articles for the moment and hopefully soon into Wikidata items. Okay. Just to add to that, Jake Orlowitz from the Wikipedia Library Project has just put out an appeal for somebody to help with some coding on the OA bot, which is getting a bit sluggish because of the volume of work that it's doing. So if anybody fancies doing a bit of open source coding, I've tweeted a link to it, and I'm sure other people will as well. Thanks. Lydia, at the end of your uh, year in review this morning, yes. there was a beautiful image of a, uh, a federated ecosystem of projects. Yep. And I'm wondering, I mean, this is incredibly exciting and incredibly important. This, it's obviously at the very, very, very beginning of what it could be. Mm -hmm. Does this, should this be in Wikidata or should this become a federated project? I know this is an, an ongoing debate and right. I'm new to it, but I'm curious to hear what uh, thoughts are in the room and from you guys. Right. Um, th that is indeed an important question, right? Um, and I think at this point we are not um, set up for doing it outside Wikidata. So I think from, from that side, the question, at least for now, is answered. But in the future, that might be different. Um, but maybe you want to talk a bit more about... Um, <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> all the the work that uh, Harish has done in um, uh, has done in yeah. So uh, James here, I don't know if he's here, uh, has done a lot of work with this project called Library Base um, to try and extract granular information, not just about sources, but also about their instances when they happen, specifically revision ID. Um, in the context of a Wikipedia article. Uh, obviously, Wikidata today cannot support that level of granularity, and so I think he made the right call to build this in a separate Wikibase instance. Now, the trouble is that this is a separate instance, uh, and so it doesn't have the, um, um, the, the, the richness of uh, other entities that we can now use to cross-link all this information with everything else. So the question is, uh, in the long term, uh, is this going to be served by a, a dedicated instance with more grant information? It's going to be more useful to integrate this into Wikidata. I don't have the answer either, so we'll need to see what happens. Yep. Yeah. We already have another uh, project, Inventare.io, uh, present here, and, and it also uh, refers to Wikidata items about publications, but enriches information about a lot of more additions than we want about books. So maybe this could be a model also for other bibliographic databases. Absolutely. And we know that the uh, Italian National Library, thank you, um, has also experimented with the idea of uh, storing natively bibliographic records in a Wikibase instance, which is also amazing. So there are many experiments. We need to figure out what works best for the ecosystem, right? Yeah. And what kinds of tools we need to make that 
work in a more federated way so we don't have to have everything in a place like we do now. All right. We have five minutes left. So maybe we have time for one more question if there yeah. is one, and then we can move on to like wrap up and final question. <laughs> we answered all the questions. Oh, yes. Amazing. <laughs> then let's go to getting involved. All right. Uh, how to get involved. So we believe that um, Wikisite, this vision, can actually benefit um, a wide range of, uh, of, of stakeholders and groups. This is a very incomplete list of people who benefit from, from this. For example, we didn't mention reporters and investigative <laughs> journalists. I do believe that that should be part of the, of the picture. Um, and obviously, we need help from all of these all of these groups to understand their needs to, in some cases, to tap their expertise. Um, librarians and metadata providers and curators of digital collections are obvious fits for, for this project. Um, and there are many ways to, uh, to get involved. Um, Wikisite as an initiative so far has been mostly uh, a series of events um, and some uh, online activity and, and set of discussions. So we have a, a page on Meta uh, called Wikisite, where you can find all information on the project. Uh, there's a fairly active Twitter handle if you're on Twitter that basically tweets every single thing related to citations on Wikipedia and Wikidata. Um, we have a mailing list called Wikisite Discuss, um, where most of the participants uh, are, are uh, discussing in more details these issues. Um, and we're also hosting events. So. Daniel mentioned before uh, our funders, so we're fortunate to have uh, the support, financial support uh, from several organizations, and we've been running, thanks to their support, uh, an event uh, in the past two years. Uh, we were so able to fly people in from all over the world, thanks to generous fellowships, and we're uh, currently um, organizing, fundraising and organizing the next event. Um, tentatively, the destination should be Barcelona at the end of, uh, the end of May 2018, but this is still subject to confirmation about logistics and funds. So uh, save the dates. Um, and uh, if you're interested, we, we hope to see you there. And with that, I think it's a wrap. We have a ton of people to thank. Uh, these are people who uh, gave us feedback on the, uh, on the deck, all the participants on the two events, uh, the funders, of course, everybody who's contributed to Wikidata um, Source Metadata Project, which is uh, the project on Wikidata predates Wikisite. Uh, and I'm sure there are many more that we're forgetting here. So thanks a lot uh, and get in touch if you're interested.